This is Urban Herping Wichita Falls Edition. Squawking ducks and uh, somewhere out there, right there, there's a red-eared slider. We're gonna come back out to an area like this after dark and see if we can actually turn up some snakes though, we'll see. What is up everyone? I am not in West Texas anymore. In fact, I am headed to Wichita Falls, Texas for a couple of days where I'm gonna hang out and visit some friends. And then I'm heading back to Georgia for the rest of the year. And probably until next summer, uh, I'll be hanging out in the Southeast for the most part. But my car is absolutely full. My cat is sleeping right there. And uh, I'm making my way home slowly over the next couple of days. And, uh, but anyways, like I said, I'm gonna stop in Wichita Falls for and visit some friends, and I'll have a little bit of time to herp in that area, so hopefully I'll be able to turn up some stuff. Anyways, I will check in with you guys when we get there, and hopefully we'll be able to find at least a few snakes. All right, everyone, night has fallen here in North Texas, and because uh, it's so oppressively hot here in August, we're gonna try a nocturnal expedition and see how it goes. There's our first snake of the night. There's a diamondback water snake right here sticking his head up. I just got stung by a scorpion, which is great. And uh, my finger's hurting a little bit. But first snake of the night, not too bad. Oh, there he goes. Hopefully we'll be able to get one in hand later. But that water right there is probably too deep. All right, guys, here's our next snake of the night. I've actually got a diamondback water snake in my hand, but there's another one right here that's trapped in this fishing net. But you can see his scales right there. He's trapped underwater, it looks like which would possibly be a death sentence for him. I've got this guy in my hand, but I'm gonna get this one out for you guys and hopefully be able to save his life here, remove this fishing net from the creek. But I'm gonna try to get this guy out for you guys uh, on camera. Okay. You can see how his head's stuck right there. He can't pull his face out or he's having a hard time, but. We're gonna get him out. Oh, there we go. He's able to surface. But you can see his head's torn up. His scales are a little messed up right there. I'm gonna go ahead and remove him completely from this net off camera just so I can make sure I don't hurt him in the process, but. All right, I got this guy out of the net, but there's actually another water snake right here. I'm gonna try to grab this one too. All right, guys, here's all three of these diamondback water snakes that we just caught in quick succession. Dawson's got one right here. This was the first one we caught, but uh, there we go. Three snakes right off the bat, pretty much. We only well, we saw the one dime back that got away, but two more, three more since then. So four total for the night so far. So while this isn't uncommon to see this many Nerodia hanging out in one place, there is something we noticed here. If you look down on the ground, there's a bunch of dead crawfish that I guess someone has captured and eaten the, the, the favorable parts of and throwing the remains out here. And I bet these Nerodia are over here trying to eat them. And unfortunately, I don't want to accuse the same fishermen, but somebody left their fishing net here too, along with plenty of garbage, which is of course incredibly irresponsible, so. All right, I'm gonna let two of these guys go right now and then I'm gonna go photograph this nicer one. So let's see, there he goes. I'm gonna get this net out of the creek. And there that guy goes, that's the one that was stuck in the net. They're just going right back to their business right here. All right, everyone, I just got done photographing this guy. Once again, these are diamondback water snakes, a species we don't have in Georgia, but they are very similar to brown water snakes overall. Uh, just a little bit more colorful, but uh, this is the, uh, I think the most recent one I captured, not the one that was stuck in the netting, but the one that crawled up as we were photo or getting that one out of the netting. So four of these guys so far tonight, I'm gonna let this guy go now that I've taken some photos and we're gonna see what else we can turn up. So while these guys are not Nerodia, and you probably saw me get bit a few times, like a lot of snakes, after they're handled gently for a while, they do chill out on you. So as you can see, no need to really restrain these guys by the head after they've calmed down a second. I see a lot of people that just strangle Nerodia because they are a bit bitey, and it's, you know, it's okay to do if you're new at this, but you don't really have to do it after you've made the initial capture. You know, you can uh, start gently restraining them by the head, and then after that, you can just kind of hold them like any other snake. They'll chill out. Emphasis on gently. No need to grip them or like squeeze them at all. They're not a venomous snake. The worst thing that could happen is you could get a little bit of a prick and uh, bleed a little. But anyways, we're gonna let this guy go. All right, guys, here's most of this cast now that we are able to pull out. It's kind of dry rotted, which means it's been in there for a while. Uh, probably killed a good number of animals. 
as we pulled it up, dead fish came out of it too. So, I mean, obviously if you're using stuff like this, you've got to take it with you when you leave. I know there's plenty of responsible fishermen out there, but I mean, that's the demographic that has done this. You know, you can't blame hunters or herpers for cast nets. So obviously you gotta police yourselves. And uh, if you see fishermen being irresponsible, obviously call them out for it, just like this. So conveniently enough, there's a trash can like five feet from where this netting was. Look at this guy. A big old crawfish just walking around on the land. Here's another diamondback water snake, number five. Chill out, buddy. As you can see, I handled him for quite a bit there and never got bit. You don't really have to pin them, but it helps a little bit, especially if your hands are full. There's number six, right? Seven, seven. seven. There was another one over there. Here's number seven. Let's see if he'll let us get, oh, nope, there he goes. There's that one. So there's six. And that one, I just showed you seven. There he is. Plenty of those guys around. All right, guys, so Dawson lives here in Wichita Falls, and he was really hoping to see a green snake tonight. So right there, we've managed to turn up just that. First one of these guys I have seen in a while, obviously. They're not very common in West Texas, and they're not very common this far west in North Texas either. I don't, I don't believe. So we're going to get a closer look at this guy real quick. Yeah. All righty, here's a little bit of a closer look. I'm going to grab this guy real quick. There he is, rough green snake, and here in Wichita Falls, Texas. An area I've never really hurt before. You know, we haven't seen anything crazy tonight, but it's always nice to go out and explore new areas and actually be successful. We've actually been uh, up in North Texas slash Oklahoma for a couple of days now, and uh, have tried to herp a couple of times. It's been completely unsuccessful until now, so. Alrighty, this is really a sharp looking rough green snake. Surprisingly white belly. I was expecting more yellow around here, but it's a nice chalky white. But a rough green snake. I mean, obviously you see plenty of these guys in my videos, but it's definitely cool for this to, this is kind of one of the things we were hoping to see tonight. We actually managed to turn one up, so I will take it. Anyways, we're going to keep at it a little bit longer. We also want to see a snapping turtle in this area. Uh, Dawson's never really gotten one in hand, so maybe we'll be able to do that now.